Right, grade 11 is now we move on to local area networks. Okay, so there is a picture of a typical network, but let's jump in and find out some more about networks. Now, we do have different types of networks. Now, remember at its core, what is a network? A network is where I have two or more computing devices connected through some sort of media for the purpose of sharing information. So I have different types of networks. I have the PAN, which is organized around the individual, a HAN in the home environment, a LAN, a small area, generally in one building. And then I've got the internet, which is a worldwide computer network, and the intranet, which is the organization's private network. So we need to know the different types of networks. We need to know our definition of what a network is. And then we need to look at some of the basic components of a network, some of the hardware. Now remember, we talk about computers, we talk about peripherals. When it comes to a network, we talk about clients and servers. So a server is a powerful computer. What does this computer do? Well, it provides services to clients within the network. And those clients could be a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, anything that's connecting to the main server um, and making use of those services. However, on the other side, our server has, and as I just mentioned, different services like offering file services, email, internet, web server, print server, database server. So if I use the example of the print server, this means that when any of these clients want to print, that instruction or that request rather will go through to the server and the server will then manage that print request and send it through to the appropriate printer. Well, how do you know that you're connected to a network? First of all, so you switch on your PC, you log in, everything is okay, and you maybe go to File Explorer and you suddenly see that there are some more drives. So if I use this as an example, there you can see there's my cat server drive. There are the presence of other computers in the network and access to devices, especially printers, is not directly attached to the computer. You'll also usually have an indicator showing network activity in the notification area. Right, so let's go back to the hardware. To connect to a network, we need a network interface controller. This is built in, this is a network card, and this is usually built into your laptops. Um, some of them are already on the motherboards of your desktop machines. But I want you just to look at the term here. Uh, they'll use the term NIC, which means or stands for Network Interface Controller. So we need this to connect to a network. Um, I plug my network cable in there, plug it into my network point, and then these lights start flashing because there's communication. Now, there are wireless adapters, um, but both are uh, built into many devices that we find these days. I mean, the mere fact that your phones can connect to wireless means you've, you've got an NIC there. Okay. Then we have our switches. These devices, and here's just an example of one, they're used to connect computers in a network so that communication can occur. And here we have, for example, a printer, we've got some computers, we've got a laptop, and they're all plugged into the switch from the switch, you might have a cable that's running from there through to your server. And that's how not only are these devices able to communicate with one another, but communicate with the server as well. We see the same scenario um, playing out in many restaurants, airports, hotels. And yeah, you can see they have a network. They have a network running there. This one has as well. Okay, so these are just some of the basic components that we find in our network. Uh, you might be at home and you might have a router. And your router is providing wireless, active or wireless uh, connectivity for everyone within the house, right? That is a network. Okay, now we know what a LAN is and we know that's our local area network. We know that this is in one geographical area, uh, but we do also have wireless LANs. Now, they are easier to install, easier and more practical between buildings, etc. Uh, but there are disadvantages to that as well. So please, with your wireless lens, just know, again, at least two of those. 
there are different communication methods. Remember a network we said is two or more computing devices connected through some sort of media. So that connection can be with cables. Um, UTP, unshielded twisted pair, shielded twisted pair. And I've got a video on this in, in my shorts. Um, so go and have a look at that on YouTube. The fiber optic cable, I've done a video with both of these. You've got your STP, your shielded twisted cable. So those are your physical cables. You've also got your wireless access points um, and wireless adapters under your wireless category. So you can either communicate with a network via cables or wireless. And just to give you an example, this is what an unshielded twisted pair cable looks like. As the name implies, it's a twisted pair of cables that has no shielding. Unshielded twisted pair. This one, shielded twisted pair. Okay. This also indicates, and UTP is one of the most common uh, network cables out there. You have different categories of UTP cable, and many of them indicate or refer to um, the speed of the data that they can transfer. So here you can see CAT5E, the data rate can be up to 1000 megabits per second. The CAT6 data up to 1000 megabits per second. Um, the CAT5 was only up to 100 megabits per second. So um, you can see with the CAT6 compared to CAT5, uh, it's a whole times 10 difference between the data that can be moved across per second. This is our fiber optic cable and you can see there's our glass fibers. So light is moving through these glass fibers. That is how the data is moving across and this is why it's able to move so fast. So if we look at the difference, with our UTP cable it only spans certain distances and you end up getting a bit of signal loss whereas your fiber can go for much longer. Your UTP cable is affected by elect electrical sources, whereas your fiber is not. Your UTP uses electrical signals to transmit data, whereas your fiber uses light signals. This you need to know. All right. When we talk about data transmission speed, just understand, which is what I mentioned earlier, it's the rate at which data is transferred over the media used. So for example, 100 megabits per second or 1000 megabits per second. When you see that rating on the cable over here, what that means is that it's the maximum speed uh, at which data can be transferred on the particular cable. Okay, So when you see these specifications on a wireless adapter, uh, you're going to buy a PC, you're going to buy a laptop, and they tell you it's a 802.11G, that indicates the speed um, that that particular standard has, which means your wireless adapter in your laptop will be able to operate or transfer data at that speed, um, or if it's got that particular letter, it'll transfer it at that speed. Just understand that your wireless LAN is going to be slower than your cabled LAN, and this has got to do with the consistency of the signal going through. Then our network software. Um, this is dealing now with software that controls communication and security in a network. Most operating systems have built-in networking capabilities, but for larger networks, they have server editions of the operating system. Right? These are installed on your servers. So all this is telling you is that most operating systems that we have today are able not only to have this capability, but it allows you then to use that, connect it up to a network, and there you go. Okay, But you're going to have a special software package when it comes to your servers. Remember all of the things that a server has to be able to do as well. Then we have some of the advantages and disadvantages of a LAN. Again, you only need to know like two of these. Um, files are transferred without the use of devices. Software can be shared. Hardware can be shared. Files are stored in a central location. Any of those um, you can use when it comes to the advantages. And then um, our disadvantages, I mean, the main thing is just it's expensive to install and maintain. And you need a network administrator to manage this entire network. 
Now, you have additional potential disadvantages if it's wireless. What are they? Security can be compromised easier. The performance can decrease and you can even get signal loss or interference. Now, something new that has been coming up in the grade 11 and 12 sector is dealing with what a network topology is. Now, first of all, this term refers to the layout of devices and their physical or logical connections using cables or Wi-Fi. And the first one we get is our bus topology. And you can see here I've got one main cable and all the computers are connected to that cable. This main cable then acts as a backbone for my network. Um, one of the computers in the network can be set up as the server. Okay, so that is my bus topology. And there are certain advantages and disadvantages to that. I'm just um, sharing this with you. You don't always have to know this. It's more just identifying the topologies themselves. Here's one called the star topology. So you can see that star layout. Here's our switch in the middle. So with this one, each computer is connected to a central device called a switch that makes the connections between the computers over the network. Okay, so the switch is doing that and you can see the physical difference. Again, it's not always going to be laid out like that, but... That is what they are referring to. And we have some advantages and disadvantages. Now, our ring topology, and you can see how that is set up again. Computers in this network are connected in a circular fashion, and data travels in one direction. That means if these two are busy over here, I've got to wait for my turn to be able to transfer data. And if I'm transferring data from myself to this PC over here, it's going to go all the way past all of these before it gets to that point. So each computer is connected directly to the next computer, forming a single pathway for signals through the network. And then the last one we get is our mesh topology. So here, every node, in other words, every machine over here in this network has a direct point-to-point -point connection to the other node. Let's see. Well, this one has a direct connection to that one, direct connection to that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, right? Um, it's reliable because if one of the connections fail, it can always maintain or remain intact so the data can still get to its destination by another route. Okay, so these are just the topologies. And we've looked at um, our advantages and disadvantages. Now we're just going to touch on our basic network security. Please... When it comes to basic network security, we are dealing with the rules to ensure the security of a network, preventing unauthorized access to information and network misuse. So access to confidential files must be restricted. In a school situation, it's important that learners don't have access to tests before they are written. A username and password um, must be created for folks to log in and gain access to the network resources. You need to choose a password known only to you, and you need to keep the password secret. Now, when it comes to passwords, you need to work on a few guidelines. Try to make it at least eight characters long. Have a mixture of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. Don't use anything that's easy to guess. Don't use passwords that follow a pattern. Try to change the passwords regularly. Um, and a good example of this is this. Now, I know you won't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I know you won't remember this, but that's the point. It must be difficult. Okay. Then lastly, we have our ethical use of computers or networks rather. Um, this is where the need for acceptable ethical practices are required. This is why we have an acceptable use policy. Ever noticed how when you go to the shops or you go to the restaurants, and they tell you you can use the Wi-Fi and you connect and you're limited to a certain speed and a certain um, amount of data that you can use. And that is what we call an acceptable use policy. It outlines the rights and responsibilities of users, especially in networked environments. It lists what the user may or may not do on the network. Okay. Now, you can go through this to see what should be included in the AUP. Things like netiquette rules, restrictions on what may be accessed, the amount of data downloaded, 
the restrictions on installing hardware and software. Um, these are just some of the guidelines that should be a, should be adhered to when throwing up an AUP, whether it's for a restaurant, shop, or your school.